All right, so if you guys have been watching my videos, then you'd know that I usually wear a watch or a fitness tracker to be more specific. And that fitness tracker is the Fitbit Charge 2. I've been using it for a couple years now, but the actual watch itself is four to five years old. And in these four to five years, Fitbit's lineup of smartwatches and fitness trackers has dramatically changed. So that leaves the question, how good is the Fitbit Charge 2 in 2021? So in the couple of years that I've been using my Fitbit, it's gone through a lot. And I mean a lot. Like the front screen especially has so many scratches and dents and cracks on it that at times you can't even tell that it's a screen. But regardless of this, the functionality of this has remained top notch. I've never had issues with the touch screen or the button or water damage or anything not working and this thing has been hit by tennis balls, scratched by branches, hit by basketballs, and yet it still functions just as well as the day I got it. So the build quality of this is still insane five years later. Now, speaking of the screen, it's a fairly small 1.5 inch OLED screen, but 1.5 inches is kind of an overstatement because that's the actual glass, but the actual screen in the glass is only about one inch, which is the same as today's Fitbit Charge 4. But the touch screen is really what's different from today's Fitbits. It's a one-tap touch screen, so it's not very interactive. You can't swipe through different stuff. You just tap once or twice to perform action. If you tap once, you just cycle through what's ever on the page. And if you tap twice, you wake the device. But you can also wake it with raise to wake. We didn't have always on displays in 2016. But it's also got a button on the side that you can use to cycle through your pages or perform actions in different pages as well. So aside from the screen, there's really only one other major category that sets the Fitbit Charge 2 aside from all the other Fitbits today. And that is the features. So first off, the Fitbit Charge 2 actually has a heart rate scanner which wasn't standard across Fitbit's line up until the Fitbit Inspire 2 dropped in, I think, October. But yeah, it's actually got a heart rate scanner. I think it's got three zones that it can recognize. So that's fat burn, cardio, and peak, I believe. It's a bit worse than the ones in the newer Fitbits today, but it's still great and it can sense my heart rate most of the time. So another feature where the Fitbit Charge 2 is honestly quite lacking compared to the newer Fitbits is exercise modes. And it's just, it doesn't come with a great choice of on-device exercise modes. Like in the Fitbit app, you can practically log whatever exercise you want. You just tap here and you can just, like search something and there's just so much that you can do. But when it comes to only the on-device, there's only like, I think, 12 exercise shortcuts that you can add onto the device itself. And with the newer Fitbits, there's just so much more choice. Like there's swim mode and there's a couple other ones as well. But one place that the Fitbit Charge 2 does not fall short though, is sleep tracking. In the sleep tracking that you get in the Fitbit app and the fact that the Charge 2 can actually support this, essentially you get a quite detailed report of your sleep and you can unlock even more with Fitbit Premium, but I have enough from the free version and you can tell like you know how much deep sleep you had how much REM sleep you had how much you were awake over the night and how much light sleep you had if you pay for premium you can get restlessness and sleeping heart rate but it's pretty cool the amount of stuff that you actually get with just this device and the fact that this is five years old and it's actually got better sleep tracking than the Apple watch is just crazy. And also another category that the Fitbit Charge 2 falls way too short, like it's a deal breaker, is customization. It's not a personal deal breaker, but if you're looking for good customization on a smartwatch or a fitness tracker for that matter, the Fitbit Charge 2 just can't offer it at all. It's only got like eight clock faces that Fitbit gave to you and that's it. That's as far as the customization goes. Obviously you can change around the bands to whatever you want from a third-party manufacturer But when it comes to just on device customization for whatever you see in the UI, it's Crazy limited like the charge 4 I believe has I think 
24 custom clock faces. But for this guy, it's just the eight that you've got and you're stuck with it. Now, even five years later, the battery life on this Fitbit has been insane. I'm still getting about two to three days of battery life, which is pretty close to the original four days of battery life that it was advertised with when it came out. And the fact that I'm still getting close to that five years later is just crazy. So yeah, battery life on this guy is pretty amazing. But despite all this, I still can't recommend the Fitbit Charge 2. The reason that I can't recommend it anymore is just the prices. Like, with the Charge 4 coming out, you can find the Charge 3 at really good prices, uh, used or refurbished on Amazon and eBay. But even if you don't want a used or refurbished watch, the perfect alternative to that is the Fitbit Inspire 2 because it's basically followed in the Charge's footprints and it's sort of just taken over that spot. And really the one feature that the Charge 2 actually has over the Inspire 2 is an altimeter which is basically the thing that measures your elevation so it can track how many floors you've climbed or how much elevation you went through during a run or a bike ride that sort of thing and I, that can be a deal breaker to some people but aside from that the inspire 2 is still a great watch in comparison to the charge 2 if you are still holding on to a charge 2 like me and your needs haven't really changed then it's still a great device to continue using now I don't really know about Fitbit's software sort of schedule, how they release updates. All I know is just that it's not quite as clear or as systematic, let's say, as the way that Apple rolls out updates, which I'm way too used to. But yeah, their software rollout thing is quite a bit different and I haven't really seen that many new features coming in through the software. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like and drop a sub. I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of February, so let's see if we can hit that goal. But anyways, that's it for me, and thank you for watching. Have a great day. I think I hit the camera there.